Uh, coin had a really nice, you know, nice bounce today. So it took out the 300, went to like 303 and change. I still like the macro level here coming up in the next day or so. They do report. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, Crazy Wild Tuesday uh, edition, edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Uh, crazy day, very, very wild. Uh, we talked about it last night on the video. Uh, first close yesterday below uh, the 50-day moving average on the NASDAQ 100. In case you didn't watch last night's episode, why was that important? Because that was uh, the start, right? That was the start of that whole big heavyweight tech rally uh, ahead of earnings, the reclaim, the remount, the 325 area uh, on the queues. And last night, we lost it, right? We lost it on the, on, on the close. And this was a very, very aggressive sell-off. And first and foremost, congratulations to all you guys uh, who did come in long uh, puts, whether it was on queues or it was Tesla, whatever the case may be, but absolutely great job. So when you woke up this morning, um, you saw this really aggressive sell-off. Uh, Tesla was down to like 570, uh, really aggressive. Amazon just got absolutely smoked. There were just so many names that really got, you know, basically, quote unquote, throw the baby out with the bathwater. So basically, anybody who was on the investor side yesterday that was sitting in pain wanted to give it one more day, what you saw happen this morning was literally, I'm out, I'm out. Just get me out of any single price. I don't want to be in this name anymore. The stock market is crashing. I want to go out. But again, it's always about cooler heads prevail. It's all about understanding the dynamics that the ending of the movie doesn't change. I use this all the time. Um, I, I use this from time to time. I, I say like like Scarface, like, right? The Scarface is, is, the, is one of the greatest movies out there. And I've used this reference so many times. Right. Tony doesn't retire at the end. Right. No, no I'm sorry. I don't want to spoil it anybody for anybody that ever saw Scarface. Tony dies. Right. The, the movie's exactly the same. So when you're getting fear, OK, when you're getting absolute fear, the biggest exaggeration prices are always going to be at the bottom of the channel. They're always going to be in exaggerated areas that people just want out at any single price. And any time you get a value move, excuse me, ex a very, very exaggerated move pre-market, especially gap down after a big, big confirmation channel, you're going to see the most exaggerated prices and values always to the upside. So if you watch last night's video and, you know, if again, if you, after this video, if you spent like five minutes or so watching last night's video, you'll kind of see we had a very, very specific game plan. Yeah, the question uh, going into today's session was, were we going to gap up, right, go green to red and get absolutely destroyed uh, testing major moving support, which was absolutely right here, or we were going to gap down, put an opening range lows and go lower, or we're going to gap down, put an opening range lows and start reclaiming levels to go higher. And that's exactly what happened today. And if you look at the 60 day moving at 60 minute moving average, you see it, right? You had this really aggressive move to the downside. The value is always, I don't care how bad the market is, when you're having Amazon down 70, 80, 90, 60, 50 points, when you have uh, Netflix you know, down 16, 17, 18, NVIDIA down 25, the value is not on the short side. The move to the short side was already gone overnight. That's the whole point of taking positions overnight to have exposure that you could take advantage of, not shorting Amazon down 80. The value is always waiting for the channels to set, get the channels ready, and when they confirm 10 o'clock, they start moving higher. Now, look, did I expect the NASDAQ to go green today? Uh, absolutely not. At one point, the NASDAQ turned green, the Qs turned green, but the game plan was there. We were ready for, for the day, and that's the most important part. Good market, bad market, quote unquote, uh, uh, bull market, bear market, you have to be ready. You can't be blindsided by the action in the middle of the day. You have to really understand, number one, what is happening, the dynamics of it, the technical aspect, the technical ramifications, the previous day's close, and oh, by the way, 3,000 other moving parts that's gonna make you a better trader, but, but make sure you're trading from a position of strength, not a position of weakness. So understanding dynamics, what happens if levels do start breaking down, what happens if levels break down and start reclaiming? And that's exactly what we had here. So if you look, for example, 
on tonight's uh, on tonight's Twitter feed, or actually, excuse me, this morning's uh, Twitter feed. This is how we kind of started the day, right? Let me show you really, really quickly. And I said, look, everything is down huge at the open. Okay, value now is to the upside. So we need to wait for these channels to develop. Okay, you cannot just randomly pick, quote unquote, a buy the dip area of any stock and say, well, I hope this is the bottom because we're, we're going to get a reversal to the upside. That's not the way it works. Okay, you need definitive levels. So my point was, I definitely did not want to be short at the open. Again, if you came in short, congratulations, you had a phenomenal, phenomenal overnight. But it as an intraday trader, the last thing I want to do is start shorting in the hole. There's a, there's, a, there's a phrase, if you've been around Wall Street trading for a long, long period of time, it's called shorting in the hole. There's no, uh, there's no, there's no X-rated version of the story. It just basically means when technical damage occurs and you get a big aggressive gap down, there's going to be emotional sellers there. Basically, the last people that jump off the Titanic Titanic and you know, and all you're left with are bits and pieces and body parts. You don't want to short that. That's where buyers come in, at least for the initial move up. So I basically said, look, the value is definitely to the upside. So we need to wait for channels to develop after 10 o'clock. I'll start putting these pivots one by one as I see a clear lane develop. In in a good case, again, this is we reclaim 33 3350s would be a potentially huge rally. That's still far away. That's the remount of the 50-day moving average. And here is my first trade of the day, uh, QQQs for experienced traders only. Remember, not every single market is for every single day. Watch the remount of 320.20s. And it wasn't the 200-day. It was actually the 100-day. Use a maximum dollar stop. So what was cool about today's session was we knew where every level was. So we they lost the 50-day moving average yesterday. They lost... Uh, they lost the 100-day moving average. And this was the 150-day moving average. And this is what I was talking about, that 30-20s level is actually 30-30s, but again, let's not split hairs. So it, it gapped down to the 319 level. It gave us a very, very definitive level. That was our max pain. And when it remounted back uh, off the 320-30s, I got long, right? Um, unfortunately, I sold way too early and I got stopped out of the last piece before the market really went ballistic. But at least that's part of the plan. A again, we we're not trying to pick you know, the, the, the closing price. We're just trying to win our interval. And the, the queues just went absolutely nuts, like literally absolutely nuts, put this huge move in. And not only did they reclaim the 150, the 100, but they came an inch away from reclaiming the 50-day moving average. We'll talk about the ramifications there uh, in a second. And then you started seeing one by one, literally a technology started waking up one by one. We started seeing really, really good pivots start to develop. And again, so far a $2 bounce, it actually turned into like a $6 bounce, like a really, really big bounce. And I kept on reiterating the point, guys, stay patient. We need to wait for these channels to develop. We should get more, uh, more clarity, I should say more clarity, not more clarity. We should get more clarity after the 10 o'clock channel. And what happened was once the baby, throw the baby out with the bathwater crowd, completely just, just sold, literally sold at the bottom of the range, you started seeing really good areas to kind of wake up here. So um, I put in this go-go. I still like this go-go. Guys, watch this thing for tomorrow. It didn't confirm, but keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow. If all you guys are trading these little ones, keep an eye on it. This thing has got rejected at the same area. This thing starts getting around uh, getting above this whole you know, $12 area, you could get a nice push here. It never sold off, so that's a really good sign. But you started seeing beta come in one by one by one. So let's talk about these pivots here. Uh, Alibaba, 218.50 needs to build. And you can just see the one by one waking up. Uh, here is Alibaba, right? So here's the 218.50, right? Here's this whole channel here, this 218.50 level. Uh, closed pretty much right at the highs, 221.50. Uh, Zoom, I screwed up, but again, it is what it is. Uh, 287 uh, needs to build. Zoom just went absolutely nuts. Like this was literally one of the stronger names and uh, Zoom went to 300. Just so here's the pivot here. I completely screwed it up, uh, but it went to all the way up to uh, like 301, 302. Big, big move there. Uh, Tesla, 328 needs to build. There was actually another uh, area of Tesla that was available. And I said, the hardest part about today is just waiting for the channels to develop, not to anticipate, not to overthink. And again, one by one, they started popping. Uh, 492.50, 493 on Netflix uh, needs to build. 
Here was Netflix. It took out the 492.50. This whole area here, 492.50.93, uh, went all the way to 498. Uh, Boeing, you know, Boeing was about. I actually shorted Boeing. Um, I actually shorted Boeing here off that 25 area. It got down to like uh, 2380s before reverse. Well, yeah, nice little scalp there. Uh, 426 to the upside, 600 to the downside. Again, there was another. Uh, area in between. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, Amazon was a really, really nice move. Uh, in case we wake up, right? And that was the whole point. In case we wake up and the tape gets stronger, 3,195, 3,200 needs to build with a measured potential move of 3,240. Congratulations, guys. This is a phenomenal move. There's very little shakes in Amazon. So here is the whole 3,195, 3,200 levels. And look at the high of the day, guys. 3,238. Missed, missed the measure potential by $2. Just a really uh, awesome move uh, in Amazon. Uh, Square was really good too. Uh, Square 217 needs to build. Buyer came in for the weekly 220s. You can see them one by one by one. I'm probably I probably missed a dozen of others, but you could only trade what's in front of you. You could only literally identify what your eyes see. So 217 needs to build with a 200 weekly call buyer coming in. Here was Square, right? Here was Square. Here's the 217 got rejected. 216.50, 216.50, took out the 217 and it went all the way up to 21 and a half. Nice move there on Square. Uh, yeah, Amazon, perfect. Absolutely perfect move. Uh, take on the way up. Square, take on the way up. Uh, Netflix, take on the way up. Uh, somebody asked, you know, somebody asked, hey, no pivots this morning? We were waiting for those 10 o'clock channels. So I winked and I said, hey, how about now? Everything woke up really, really aggressively. Great job today, guys. Uh, Alibaba, big move there. Uh, coin. Coin actually looks pretty good. Uh, coin, uh, 299.300. It was right at lunchtime. Can see a previous highs of 307. Not a big move, but uh, Coin had a really nice, you know, nice bounce day. So it took out the 300, went to like 303 and change. I still like the macro level here coming up in the next day or so. They do report on Thursday after the close. Maybe you get one more day of run-ups. Uh, again, nice little lunchtime spike, blah, 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 blah. Again, great job here. Uh, nice little spike here, intraday on Tesla, 622 rejected uh, several times. You know, we're up like three, four bucks on that 622 remount. Here was Tesla. I know it wasn't a huge move, but here was that three, 622 remount right here, 622. It traded right into supply here around 625. Not a big move, but again, you don't need every single trade to be uh, huge. Again, take on the way up. And I said, listen, not bad, you know, not bad at all. So I, I think going into tomorrow, guys, and this is kind of how we look at it from the technical side. Yeah, the good news is we definitely defended some levels, right? I, I think that's a very big key. So now at least we have a definitive area here, just in case the bears seize back control. Again, everything's possible, right? Everything's literally on the table. But just in case the bears seize back control, at least we have a definitive line in the sand to the downside, right? Uh, in the future, in case they start coming down this level and start reclaiming areas, then we could have a problem. So again, then you have a very, very big problem because the measure of potential from demand to demand starts getting really, really big. But again, I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse. The problem with the upside tomorrow is that we did get rejected off the 50 day moving average. And there's a lot of charts that are stuck in the middle channels. Now, my preference of choice, if I'm going to get long anything tomorrow, okay, I don't think we're going to get this majestic moves like we saw today, but I do believe there are some value. And if you look at names, for example, um, like a RBLX, right? Like RBLX had some really good, art, uh, really good earnings today. Again, if RBLX has a day two run and starts going red to green or opening range highs, maybe it could start attacking uh, all time highs, right? That looks good. It's a very, very strong chart. A uh, name like Coinbase, again, ahead of earnings, maybe it takes out this channel here. Maybe we get a run up ahead of earnings. So that looks good, right? There's some measured potential there. Um, you know, a name like Docu, maybe coming off the bottom, right? You saw here coming off the bottom, they got really, really beat up. If it starts reclaiming the five day moving average, maybe we get another move as well. So I don't believe tomorrow is going to be like today. I don't think, um, I don't think the aggression, I don't think the volatility, um, I don't think the erratic behavior today, aggressive wise in the index is like, I don't think we're going to see a two, 300 point swing in the NASDAQ. I think it's going to be a lot more controllable, maybe a lot more muted. Uh, I know a lot of people tomorrow, based on today's action, are going to be a little bit disappointed because you're not going to have the measured potential. But, get, but again, it, it's, it's trading the market you have in front of you and preparing for that type of day. Today, at least, based on last night's video, we talked about it more in strategy. 
We were ready for the volatility. We were ready for levels being rejected uh, and reclaimed. We were ready for the, the expansion channels, for the measure potential. That's not going to be the session tomorrow. I think tomorrow is going to be much more controlled. I think tomorrow is better for more scalps, you know, maybe in, in beta names when you get the dollar, dollar fifty, try to get two dollars, maybe get a holder runner to see if you get a better move. But I don't envision a, a, a session like we did today. And again, it's very, very important to kind of learn how to shift gears, right? Get aggressive, stay passive, but more important, stay in the game. Guys, have a great night. I wish you all the best. God's help. And I'll see you all tomorrow.